Hello, I'm over here XToyCat, and the Minecraft Marketplace lets you buy add-ons now. And the most expensive is also the very best reviewed. This is the Naturalist add-on, and although these animals look great, I'm not sure that I'd pay $8 for something that you can get on Java for free. Literally the exact same pack, but I think a lot more people might be tempted by paying $2 for some elemental crops, for example, or $5 to get dragons in your world, the full version that is. And also, I wonder why this pack is reviewed 3.1 stars despite being paid. What is wrong with it? Or maybe do people misunderstand it? Well, today I think it'd be fun to go through every single add-on, and so by the end of this video, I'll have every add-on that exists at launch on the marketplace installed, and I think it'd be fun to combine them all into one mega added on world, so make sure you stay to see what that looks like, because we've got to start by working out how much we're going to be spending on the marketplace if we want to buy each of these add-ons. Uh, they have various costs that range from 2 to $8, but if you add them all together, you get a grand minecoin cost of 6610 which without any incentives or anything else, works out to about $41 in minecoins, which we're now going to swallow. Oh, it hurts a little bit, but what we have to do for content is what we have to do for content, because now I can go into the very cheapest of these maps, the elemental crops, and let you know what it actually looks like on an existing survival world. Let's go. By the way, quick reminder, when you add any add-on, paid or free to a world, it will give you this big warning, and also it will disable achievements. So anyway, this is elemental crops. Let's read all about it. Oh, it's got actual options in here. So I was going to head right back home and to my farm where I could actually start growing these things. However, it actually turns out that some of these elemental seeds, the earth to be precise, can be found below the surface when mining ore blocks. So I'm actually in the perfect place by accident. Oh, there we go. Those are some earth seeds right there. We now have two of them, which is hopefully enough. Okay, that is wind essence seeds obtained. They were obtained by killing a, I don't make this up, flying mob because they all have wind in them. And so now all we need to find is some fire, some water, and some ender. And then I'm going to use all of those seeds to make myself the newest type of farm that I know exists. And I imagine it's based around a wheat farm where I'm just going to hoe the ground and put some seeds in it and then see where that takes me. Uh, I am very curious and also excited at the exact same time. So this is what it looks like. And uh, let's be honest, we could sit here and wait, or I could take full advantage of the fact that this is my Let's Play world where I have many skeletons that have been murdered. You know, let's be honest, they, 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 they came after me first. It was full self-defense, but that means I have a lot of bone mill, which I can handily use to grow this up. And then we're going to break it and get some more earth essence seeds while also getting earth essence itself, which we could then bone mill again to get, oh, what's that? Is that more earth essence seeds and more earth essence? It looks like you never get extra seeds for this, which means you're only ever going to get two rewards. But still, this is all you need. It's a bone meal to earth essence farm right now. And then the same for all of these other types of crops. Gotta say, by the way, the earth seeds were actually the least interesting of the entire batch. Look at these fire seeds right here, which I actually got another one off because you don't just get, uh, you're, you're getting one seed back is the 99% scenario, it seems. But some of these plants will give you a little more than that. So you can very, very, very slowly grow your collection, which makes me think that the end crop must be really good. Okay, these are not useful individually. They are very, very small parts of what becomes a greater recipe. So you need nine separate essences, which group together to make a crystal. And then you take two of those crystals and plus an iron ingot, and you can make yourself one ingot, in this case, a fire ingot. Once you've got a fire ingot, you can then start to craft fire chest plates or fire boots or fire helmets or fire leggings. However, all of these pieces of equipment, just like with the dragon set, are not actually worthwhile until you have all of them. But you need close to 400 plants worth of growth, uh, and you're going to need that if you want to <laughs> get anywhere near having any value from them in the terms of the armor. So I'm now going to work out what else we can do of it, because that is ridiculous, right? Oh, no, no, that's, it's, it's all about the armor. The entire point of these elemental crops is that you can use them to get armor. That is 100% of it. Okay. Although now might be a good time to point out that these crops won't actually grow by themselves unless you have the only other thing in this entire add-on, the sprinkler. So the sprinkler is not a replacement for water sources. That is from the game book, not from me. It is just an additional thing that is required to be nearby them because otherwise they just can't grow. It's a additional source of difficulty that they have applied here but I'm not really sure it does too much. Uh, as you can see, I am slowly getting more crops, but because the crops don't grow automatically, 
without the sprinkler, and they don't seem to grow very fast with it either way, and you need 400 of these, it's, uh, it's a bit of an unbalanced game mechanic. Again, I, uh, I hate to say it, but this isn't something you would see in vanilla Minecraft, which is obvious for an add-on, right? But it also might not be. If you spend money on something, you might expect it to be just as good as something that you get for free, but it actually is a little bit worse, I think. Okay, we now have enough to make the chest plate and the leggings, but we're still short of the rest of this. But still, here is what it looks like when you equip it. It's fairly nice. It's the equivalent of Neverite, it seems. Uh, although it doesn't say what the armor protection is, like your Neverite does. Uh, can it be enchanted, is the question I have. I am going to use my enchantment table tree here just to test this. It can be fully enchanted, which is nice. But it won't do anything at all until here we go. Look at this. This is the full set that has been achieved. So now I have fire resistance which is just always applied, which means I can jump in lava if I really want to. And that is the extent of the fire elementals which you find in this. Every single uh, piece of armor is going to have its own unique ability. The ender one would have given me a robust armor that shields against shulker levitation and ender dragon beth. Uh, also, it teleports attacking enemies away. The water element, I'm guessing, is breathing underwater. Yep, that's uh, water breathing. Improve visibility and increase swimming speed. The wind element must be the most interesting one, right? It is... Uh, crafting armor that bestows swiftness and slow falling. And then finally, we've got the earth element, which is armor that provides strength and resistance to knock back while being highly durable. And that is the entire add-on. That is everything that you can get inside of it. Five sets of armor, as well as some plants, as well as a sprinkler. I do think that on a quality front, it would be very hard to give this anything above a five. I just, I, I, I think you can get so much more with some add-ons than you can get with this. This is definitely one of those Gen 1 add-ons that no one's going to come back for in a few months, but right now it might provide someone with something, but on a value for money level, I figured this would be the best value at only $2, but it's priced at $2 for a reason, and so I'm going to have to give this a 4 for value for money. I don't think that this is great, but I also don't think it's terrible. I hope that it's the worst one we go through today, but we'll have to see, because let's go into the second one right now. Oh, this next add-on is Spark Portals, which I have to say is the most interesting sounding to me personally from the first 15. I heard that you can do fun things with portals and you can link different portals across your world. So the way this works is you build a portal frame which has to be four wide and five tall and it has to be made from a special type of obsidian that has dye in it. So it's not just two portals of a given color that you can have. You can have as many as you like but it will randomly link you to any other one as best I can find out and that is the entire add-on. So kind of short on content but I I think that, you know, the ability to get around your world by portals might be enough that some people are interested. This seems like the paid equivalent of the Gravestones add-on, where it's a really valuable service such that enough people just say, yeah, I'll have it by itself. Fortunately, I have a ton of obsidian already, so I can really start to experiment with this, but I'm going to need some ender pearls and some dye as well. And now let's make some portal frames, so I can make eight green portal frames, but I need a minimum of 10. I can make uh, 24 magenta and 32 red. So realistically, that means I can only use these two things right now. And now let's go ahead and make a portal to show how useful this add-on can be. This can be done the classic way. It says four by five, which is weird dimensions to describe a portal by. But yeah, you just wanna place it like so, and then we light it like so. And Jim will not be able to take us anywhere because there's no other red portals. Oh, you use the names to be able to pick between the portals. It's not random. It is based on what you select. So now I can go ahead and put another portal on the other side of my world. And when I complete this one, it's going to give me the ability to rename it. So I'm going to call it my bedroom portal. Uh, and once we do that, I now have the ability to sleep right here in my bedroom, in my castle. I definitely, I built this so many years ago and I've used it for precisely nothing because it's so far away. And this add-on solves that problem because I can take it to the sky rail if I want to. It takes a couple of seconds, but that's much faster than any other form of travel because now I'm over here. No, never required. And then if I want to go back over to Jim, my good friend, I can also teleport over to him. Very, very interesting. So honestly, the fact that they have the ability to pick the portals like that kind of makes me question what the use for the, uh, you know, like the different colors is because I could build a second one of these right here. Let's name this one Susan. 
And now we have the ability to, whenever we want, have a second set of destinations. Like, hypothetically, I could go to my console size never. Don't question how there's water in here. It's a work in progress. But I could go to my console size never, and then I could just build another one right here. By the way, I'm using obsidian for the corners. I think it's a, a fun throwback, but I could equally use the green portal frames or anything else. But boom, now we have the ability for a new portal in the never. And uh, we have the ability to go between these two, Susan and the Never. The different colors are mostly there for aesthetics, as best I can tell. But I do like those aesthetics. They are very, very nice. So at $4, um, there's a part of me that says, oh, is this really it? And there's another part of me that says, but this is cool, right? And transportation being solved in your world is really, really great. And unlike so many of the other add-ons, famously the hikers... Uh, the, the hiking pack I want to point out uh, the walking stick didn't do nothing It was a diamond sword that gave you speed and gave you haste and in exchange all you had to do was uh, You know use free sticks that is OP whereas this feels like a fair balance But conversely if you want to get the very best form of transport that Minecraft can offer you You're going to need to get dye and obsidian and ender pearls Which you know some might argue is actually kind of hard and therefore if you're paying for something do you want it's be so late game. This is a definite quality of seven. It's well balanced. It's got lots of features. But on value for money, I think I'd have to say it's even less. As much as I love. So I've got lime now, which I can transfer from lime to lime. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I tried to travel to the same portal. So they're always listed in the order you build them, I would guess. And so that is useful information to know. Whether you're traveling 20 blocks or 2,000, doing it instantly is powerful. But it is just one feature, and it is $4. So I like this a lot. I would recommend it if you are not price sensitive. If you if you look at $4 and it's the same as nothing to you, then this is a cool add-on to have, in my opinion. Anyway, with that said, let's move on to the next add-on now. The next add-on is called Mutants, and this will add a variety of deadly and horrific mutant mobs. Again, this is an old-school book for it, but it's going to explain each of these new mobs one by one by one, if we want to see them. I guess we're just going to find them out and about, which is intriguing. Looking forward to finding some mutant versions of some mobs. So while it's daytime, the first two mutants I'll be looking at for are the mutant frogs and the mutant chickens. So is this a mutant frog? Doesn't look like one to me. Oh, that, no, no, I think, I'm pretty sure that must be the mutant. Oh, okay. Um, well, the good news is uh, you can head away into a cave where he can't hurt you anymore. The bad news is I think I'm wrong about that. Oh, this is horrific. Why is this a thing? Oh, he's got such- okay. So this is not a fight to have in the early game. He has a lot of damage, and you're gonna need to burn him, or do something to him from a distance if you want to stand a chance. Oh no, is that another one? I really- I can't deal with two of you fellas. Uh, this is a mob that has a horrifying ranged attack, so you even need to tank it, like I'm gonna try right now. Just tank, 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 Oh, it worked! And now I've got some mutant frog slimes. Uh, but I think a range attack is probably the best way to deal with that. So yeah, that's nice. I got a new item. What can it be used to craft? The charmed mutant vial is the answer to that apparently. Which makes me think that I could actually take one of these giant frogs and make him work for me. So because mutants can be found anywhere their non-mutant counterparts can be found, uh, it should be very easy for me to find one out here somewhere. That's a regular skeleton, and that's a regular creeper too. In case you're curious as to why these regular mobs still spawn at the same time, it is because every add-on in the marketplace has to keep vanilla exactly the same. You cannot- Oh, why? Oh my gosh. But you cannot alter the vanilla game, uh, and it's partially to enable, uh, to make sure that mods are compatible with each other, because if they altered vanilla, they'd have to compete with each other. Whereas this way, in theory, you can use different colored portals with flaming chickens if you want to, with, uh, you know, like everything else, including Hiker's Friend, which is something to keep in mind. Is that an iron golem? We'll kill it and find out. I do have a smite sword, useful for these situations, basically. Let's see what happens if we fight him, which I'm not trying to fly to do. <laughs> he definitely wants me to. Okay, so let's get out of here. He's gonna throw a bus at me. That doesn't make too much sense to me, but I'm... <laughs> oh, it's TNT! He's throwing actual explosions. Wow. Okay, a little ridiculous, but I'm just trying to finish this guy off. He's an absolute tank, by the way. This is a Neverite Max Enchanted Sword, and it is still 
nowhere near enough to kill him. So basically this adds mini bosses to your world and you can kill those bosses to get new items that will do weird things. You'll be pleased to know that I have found a mutant creeper and my goal is not to fight him, but instead to charm him. Oh, and he turns into a regular mob when I do that. So you can unmutantify a mob if you get any killed from- Oh, there's a mega skeleton too. So there's two giant zombies and a giant uh, skeleton here. I was going to make a comment about how it's actually on the easier side of doable, but if you get four mutants at a time like this, which, you know, Minecraft Bedrock spawning does make very likely, your odds of succeeding seem pretty low. Look at that. He's just he's firing a flurry of arrows right there. Um, so my plan is just to show you that this is a skeleton. I'm going to smite him as best I can, and it's not going to work for me. Okay, I'm basically dead. And then I'm going to show you that there was a creeper. He was very big, although really the smallest of the batch. And then there are more zombies, which are famous for exploding, and so they launch one at you. And at the same time, because even it's, even though it's nighttime and raining, you can still find the daytime mobs like a flaming chicken. So you get, you get a lot for your money when it comes to the overworld, but this isn't the only place you can do that. So these mini boss fights are obviously mini boss fights, but what happens if you take a regular boss fight and you turn it into something else? Well, that's what I want to know. See, this is the problem of lighting up your end too well. Uh, if you have the ability to stop Enderman spawning, you apparently also stop Mutant Enderman. But yeah, even my Cherry Grove biome I built out here. Very beautiful, very much complete, no holes in this whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, even that is looking uh, kind of questionable. Anyway, let's go all the way out here to my End Islands, where there are no torches and where there are Endermen. Some of Hume, whom, you know, some of Hume might be mutants. So a regular Enderman honestly is a hard fight sometimes. Let's see what a mutant Enderman's all about. I do know I want to kill him for his loot. So we're gonna make sure we get that done right now. Okay, just just doing my best. He, I don't know what he can do to me, but he's, he's not doing a good job at it, that's for sure. Honestly, he seems easier than a regular Enderman at this point. Unless he's making these other Endermen attack me. In which case, whoopsie. A pro tip about all of the Endermen attacking you is you can just either let them despawn or fly above them where they can't attack you. But while flying just barely above them, I lost my giant Enderman. So for the next mutant mob, where we're gonna have to go is the Never, because there are three Never mutant mobs as well. So, uh, in addition to the Overworld and the End mobs, you'll also find mutant piglins, you'll find some mutant ghasts, and I'm not looking forward to those, and some mutant these guys. Ah! Okay, this, honestly, I have to admit, the terror factor on these is very high. I am someone who is not scared at Minecraft very often. Um, I'm gonna gonna level with you. Um, but yeah, the oh, we didn't get a wither skull from it. That was that was a uh, more terrifying, but probably the least dangerous that we've encountered so far. He actually just died when I fought him. Although, as it turns out, uh, even though you're meant to find the mutant piglins and bastions, they're just gonna spawn anywhere in your world. Oh! <laughs> And they're a lot more terrifying than mutant wither skeletons based on that interaction we had just there. So keep your eye out and also make sure to bring a spare totem or two for this guy. Okay, please don't murder me. I don't want to die. And also this is a mutant ghast, which I'm assuming is just going to have bigger explosions. Like what else can it do, right? Okay, yeah, just two of them. I love aerial combat as much as the next person, but this mob is actively trying to get away from me and can basically keep me away uh, in melee. So yeah, I think the solution to basically all of these mobs so far, bar the Enderman, is definitely keep them at a distance. Anyway, the question I know we're all asking is what is the mutant wither like? And the answer is, oh God, I'm dying, aren't I? Okay. Not dead though, just dying. Um, the mutant wither, it's kind of a big deal. He can shake your reticule, which, you know, that's that's new behavior to me. And uh, can also... Uh... <laughs> okay, I don't want to fight the mutant wither. I mean, I level with you. I don't want to be involved with that fella. Uh, and so I'm just going to choose not to be. Um, but this is the big boy bad boss of this add-on. So, yeah, each of these uh, mobs will give you something special with the drop that they get. Whether it's a mutant wolf rug, a mutant ink vial, a teleportation rob, which can move you forwards, um, mutant tears, titan beacon, which can be kept in your offhand for constant strength and regeneration. And in my opinion, none of them feel too ridiculously OP. I'm going to be honest, I don't want to fight the wither to get one of those. <laughs> I'm, I'm good without that. I'm just going to go back to the overworld and say that overall, um, from what I've experienced off this add-on, 
I would say on a quality level, they are intriguing. And although they're poorly balanced, it's still solidly a seven and a half or an eight out of 10. I'll go eight to be generous. Um, and on a value for money level, you're getting a lot of unique mobs and also unique, uh, you know, like items. I do think that this is a lot of value if you see it that way. And so I'm going to have to give this a solid seven out of 10. The next one is going to be a little bit different, I assume, because we're moving into the lowest rated add-on on the marketplace so far. So Tecna is an add-on that costs five US dollars, which you would figure might be the reason for it being so lowly rated. But no, that can't be it. There's a lot of free ones that have lowish ratings and also some very expensive ones that don't. And then I try to look at the info cards, which by the way, this is the best done tutorial out of any of them. It has images as well as text, as well as different fonts. And honestly, I think this is the easiest explanation of how these things work. Maybe you could argue that they need diagrams is bad because because I couldn't tell you why I would want a lava pipe with this explanation or with the, uh, you know, even the description below it. But what I can say is that this is a technical add-on that allows you to make flour as well as crushers and sieves and smelters. Wait, what? So, mate, what, what is the... Okay, you get kind of like a fortune style smelter of that. And a foundry can melt items containing metal into ingots. So there's a lot of items which are just better versions of vanilla style things. And let's try out some of those. Okay, we need technadium, which is raw iron, amethyst shards, and a workbench. And then we can use that to make some stuff, maybe. Okay, that's a little bit confusing. Okay, so I'm just gonna try shapeless recipe. There we go. That gives me the technadium matrix. And now that I've got the technadium matrix, I can craft some other stuff. No, I'm, I am misunderstanding this from the get-go. So, the technadium is needed to make all technical blocks. Make the metric. Oh, you've got to heat it to make ingots from it. And then those ingots create everything else. So let's take out my sponges or whatever this is. And let's put in the technadium matrix, which we're going to need to get some more of, by the way. So we're going to maybe have to go mine some raw iron, but we've... Yeah, this doesn't show up in the crafting table. I see why you would dislike it. A lot of console players especially, because it's so it's so unwieldy to have to do this on a controller. A lot of console players don't like the idea of manual crafting, and you're not going to know what to manually craft, even if the game tells you. So I do think that is a serious weakness. But there we go, our first technadium ing ingot, which we can use to make a crusher, a foundry, a mill, a lava pump, a water pump, a sieve, or a smelter. So every single thing in this pack requires a lot of raw iron and a lot of amethyst shards. Wait, actually, I just had a smart idea. So there's something called the smelter, which gives you a lot more bang for your buck when you smelt. So if I make one of those first, then we can place this down. Please don't be an entity. Please don't be an entity. Please don't be an entity. Uh, oh, it's a real block. Okay. So now we're going to put all of our technadium in there instead. So I've used, uh, this is all the raw iron that I could find. So I'm really hoping for a good set of smelting so I don't have to go mining. But uh, yeah, now we can throw it in there. Oh, I do not understand how to use the smelter. The best thing I can think of that might be going wrong here is maybe you can't smelt Tegmadium Matrix. Even though it is definitely an ore, we can look at it. And it's part of this same add-on. I don't think they thought about that. So I'll grab some copper just in case that's true, because it would feel very silly to me if it was. But let's throw copper in that. So they all the copper went in, but it's just not doing anything now. Okay, well that's nice. I guess I'll I'll have to cook up the rest of my technadium. <laughs> so we can make a lava pump fairly easily, but if we want to make a lava pipe, I have absolutely no clue. Maybe if we get a block of lava, it might help me, or rather a bucket of lava. But um, yeah, this is not... How do you make a pipe? <laughs> this is not the most intuitive add-on so far. But let's make a wind generator now. Next to my pump. Right there, maybe. Uh, there we go. I'm harnessing all that wind energy that my cave has. And now it can run my, my thing, right? Maybe. Okay, so now we've got... Uh, I Oh, there we go. Now you can actually see what I'm putting in there. And you can also see the... Oh, do I have to... Is this where the lava has to go in? Yeah, so... I have to connect this to lava, which should be easy because there is some just over here. I need a cable first of all, by the way, because even though this is... Oh, we've got to, we've got to connect this to the top. Okay, no, there we go. See, I don't need a cable. I can break this and I can put it right on top. Oh, you can't just place it on top unless maybe it's the height that's getting in my way. 
Okay, so let's try that again. Not not working still. So you can't just connect it straight to the top there. Uh, instead, we are going to need one of those electricity cables. And an electricity cable is... I Come on. I mean, what? what okay, I'll type in uncraftable. Cable. How, how am I... How am I meant to do this? <laughs> you, you, if you don't give me the recipes in your book, and you also don't give me the recipes in the crafting table, how am I meant to do that? <laughs> it's not gonna be made in the crusher, or the sieve, or the smelter, or the foundry. Although I guess we could logically assume it's made from gold, but I have gold! How, how do we make a cable? <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to leave that to the side for now and hope I magically get some solution. And uh, I will instead show you the crusher. You put gravel in. Oh, and this requires electricity too. You can't, ah, you can't require electricity and then not make it overtly obvious how you get the electricity. You can tell me it's a cable all you like. I know it's a cable, but I, there's no way for me to get that in survival. So, okay. I guess, I guess this is a, a creative style mod, cable. It's called the Technic Cable or the Cable Placer. So this Cable Placer, I'm gonna need like five of those. We'll go from here and then we connect it down and then over here. Okay, yeah, we got the exact right number of cables it seems. Wow, look how good I am at crafting. I I know exactly what I am doing. One debt to society later. This it's got it's got the stuff in there. It's got the lava pipe written right next to it, but it just will not connect. This is a messy add-on. I want to like it, but it's not intuitive at all. I do think there's a there's a learning curve to this one. Uh, and I think that learning curve is probably higher than most people are anticipating. So in case you're curious, here is every single item that you can get from this pack. Uh, but whether it be wind generators, or whether it be uh, solar panels, or whether it be the actual blocks themselves, you can see them all right here, and you can see that this is a fun idea for a pack. I do quite like the idea of there being a technical add-on, and whether it's this or computers, I think there is a decent argument that we only really have the bare bones right now, um, which is a little disappointing. I do think that looking at the idea of Technocraft, the idea of being a super technical player with all of these fun sorts of energy sources, is very, very fun. Oh no, he's back. <laughs> it's a very fun idea, but the execution, in my opinion, is not there right now. I wanted to like this pack. You know, I, I, I'm i serious here to, to the people who made this. I, uh, I don't think that they hadn't got the heart in the right place. I think they put a lot of effort into this pack but I don't think that effort delivers its results to the end player, and I think that it doesn't deliver value to basically anyone. I do say that this has got to be a 3 out of 10, because it can feel really cool once you work it all out, I'm sure. But this will stay part of my mutant pack that I'm slowly building together, and uh, we're going to move from the worst rated add-on, which sadly is deserved. I think value for money is in the toilet with this one. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I do think that, on the other hand, uh, it's worth moving on to the best best rated uh, marketplace add-on so far because I do think that it's uh, pretty intriguing but I'm also not sure that I agree so <laughs> the uh, the ocelot still attacks the chicken even when it's a mutant chicken that is a hilarious interaction Speaking of hilarious interactions, I want to point out that when it comes to the naturalist add-on, this is the most time that I've spent with any of the add-ons. I spent about two hours playing around with it in a new survival world, and honestly, I found it to be one of the most intriguing. I I, I do think uh, the amount of content in it is the highest of any that exist, and as you uh, look around at some of my gameplay, you'll see that there is some really, really fun looking animals that you'll find in there. I got attacked by a rhino, it went poorly for me. However, I would have to say that off the overall pack, although it has a lot of content, the content is mostly surface level. Most of the mobs are just there to exist, and so if you're the player who's been yelling at Mojang, add mobs to the game even if they don't do anything, not every feature needs to have a use, this is the add-on for you, I do have to say. Um, it is the least impactful in a long-term world, but a most impactful in a brand new world. It makes the world feel alive in a different way, and for that, I don't, even though I wouldn't say it's my personal favorite, 
Weaver add-on, I would say in terms of, you know, like a pure quality, it's 9 out of 10. All of the mobs look incredible, and uh, in terms of value for money, as much as I want to make the dig that this was available on Java for free, ultimately it's fair for creator to decide to charge for something. It does feel wrong when they charge for something that previously they were making free, but that means that now a whole generation of console players can access birds. Look at this blue guy. Um, yeah, and so, um, if you want to pay the money for it, you will be supporting the creator, alongside Microsoft and Mojang, but, uh, you know, you, you can support the people who put all of this effort in, and so, I don't want to say it's poor value for money because you have to pay, I want to say it's poor value for money because it's the most expensive. I think it is, again, I think it's a big enough sell to say, yeah, pay for this thing that was previously free, I think it's a huge sell to say, oh, and by the way, just, uh, entirely unrelatedly, we're gonna charge the highest price of any add-on so far. That is very, very cheeky. Uh, absolute 7, eight, seven out of 10. Um, you know, really we could subtract a point for each extra dollar it costs over the, the average of 5 or 6, but I won't be doing, uh, the average of 4 or 5 I should say, but we won't be doing that too much today. Instead what I'll be saying is next up we've got computers. So for the computers add-on I need to quickly give you a couple points of full disclosure. I did play this one first of all of the add-ons and also I got it complimentary from Jigabob. I like Jigabob's maps a lot and so we have a relationship uh, where he lets me know when he's making things and I can request codes from him, uh, but do just keep in mind that that is is, uh, my biases that I need to disclose. As I mentioned, that Computers is actually really, really cool. I think this is a great example of a fantasy fun add-on to your Minecraft world that feels like it would never fit in the slightest. I mean, having a computer on the floor of my Let's Play world didn't make any sense to me. However, it really did grow on me and it made me think, yeah, this can be a fun, slight tech side of the game, but I also would say that this is the type of add-on that you really want to combine with other ones. So as we get to the end of this and we throw it all in together, this is going to make the most sense, at least perhaps. We'll see about that later. But for now, I just want to say, yeah, this is the thing that makes the most sense uh, if you're combining it with a lot, but not too much by itself. So I think it's a solid uh, 7.5 out of 10, I think, uh, in terms of uh, pure quality. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I didn't find it to be too intuitive, but if you dive into it, it's real great, which is why I think that it's uh, wonderful in that way. And also, I would just give the little point of clarification right here, um, that I think in terms of value for money, it's perfectly fine. I think uh, the, the, the types of content you get at the very higher end of the marketplace scale, don't seem like it's a lot more. It's not four or five times more than the lower end of the scale. And so this is perfectly mid-range. I don't, I wouldn't say it's bad or good value personally, but what about when we move on to the next add-on? Okay, the next add-on that I'm curious about is called Dragonfire, and the reason that it gets me just so curious is the fact that there was a free version of this that I reviewed recently, and this is just called Dragonfire, but not light. What does this include that Dad doesn't? Well, let's find out. As you can see, it is a slightly bigger explanation, and it also seems to from the images be roughly the same stuff, but looking right here you can see that equipping a full armor set has powerful effects. There's a Dragonpedia with a book and a scale which gives you information and then there are Wandering Traders and then there are Solar Egg Traders, Elf Egg Traders, etc. In other words, it looks the same right now. I'm gonna go equip myself some armor though. Oh no, no I'm not going to. <laughs> but yeah, let's go ahead let's grab the best gear that we can right now. Yep, I would say this is about right. Oh god, that's <laughs> his arm is inside her. Anyway, yeah, this is about right now. Let's go out into the big wide world and let's find ourselves a dragon to tame. Oh, and no, I'm just, I just want some fireworks so I can get out there. It was probably bad luck, but it took me an overwhelmingly long time to actually find a dragon. And I guess it makes sense that all of these other animals and even these mutants should be more common than dragons, but it also felt real bad to have downloaded an add-on and not find the key feature. When I did eventually find this purple dragon, he was called a cobra for some reason, he was not very good at defending from the mutant, which isn't the fault of the dragon fire add-on, by the way, uh, but it is worth mentioning that these mobs are basically unusable once you get them in the water, and even worse, when I was flying one around, it was near impossible to actually see anything. And so I decided to find myself a new dragon, something I couldn't do naturally, and so instead I took advantage of these traders. If I go to this fellow, he says, yeah, 32 raw copper, and I'll have a Rex egg. That's really nice. I can now place this down and watch it 
grow. If I go to this guy, he says, yeah, give me 30 proof raw gold, you can have a gladius egg or buy yourself a saddle. Sure, good deal if you ask me. Uh, if I go to the next person in here, oh, this is starting to get confusing. Uh, he says 12 blaze powder will get me a solar egg. And you can sort of see how looking around here that there are these traders around your world who want specific resources. Something I do actually quite like as an alternative to finding dragons. Okay, here's the dragon fruit trading man. I'm going to buy some blaze squashes <laughs> and some vital pears and some zephyr berries. These all sound very made up, but you know, you know the, the, the common criticism people say about when Minecraft adds new features is it looks like a mod. Mods are allowed to look like mods, and so here we go. Let's use these. Can I use them on their dragons actually? Oh, you can. So you improve the attack rank of a dragon by giving it the fruit. So really you need this guy very, very desperately and you want to buy all that you humanly can from him. Do you think I can give this to a horse? No, he doesn't, he's not excited about it. I bet this newt would be if he knew what it was though. By the way, every dragon actually requires a different ingredient to tame. So this guy required some raw beef just now. And uh, yeah, like every other dragon, he starts at level zero for everything, but I'm going to buff this guy like crazy. So uh, just to confirm at speed rank seven, he can go this fast, which is, you know, pretty good. I feel like it'll be oh, oh, even faster once he gets in the air. But imagine what that could be if we give him all of these other abilities too. So Zephyr Berries, max level. Sure, let's do it. Let's go for- Oh no, he can, he's so fast. He can outrun my ability to feed him. Then we'll give him Attack Rack to the max. We'll give him Vitalipairs to the max. And then we can look at him and see- Okay, look at his health bar right now. It is so big that it is covered up by any text. And now let's go for a fly together, shall we? Ooh, yeah. Oh, I don't know if I'm flying right now. It's very hard to see with the dragons in front of you. But look at this. This is Spood right here. Oh yeah, I am going crazy. <laughs> this was incredibly fun and the speed you could get was blowing my mind. However, I do have to say that the main part of this add-on besides the armor and the things you can craft with the scales is riding the dragons and it was a terrible experience. I hated this so much. So much of you, you was hidden and even when you switched to third person, it didn't end up being very good. That is what leads me to say that although I really like the variety of dragons. I liked the different traders and I do think it was decently enough balanced perhaps besides the fact that all of these berries had to come from one type of trader that was going to spawn randomly. Um, a lot of this did feel a little bit random which can feel bad when you paid for an add-on uh, but if you can deal with that I think that the quality on this is a solid 7. It's really really good just missing some nice polish around the edges which hopefully they can update and we can improve that score later. Um, and in terms of value for money I do think that even though there is a free version of this add-on it's free for anyone to download and I think that if you did like that it would be something that you can commend. Supporting someone who creates something that you like for free is something you should definitely do and so I'm going to give it a 8 out of 10 for value if you are the sort of person who thinks well I liked it I should pay for it but if you're the sort of person who says well if there's a free version I want to know that it's worth upgrading from that I'm not sure that it is but I would still say very positive things about the value of this pack if you're the sort of person who loves the idea of flying a dragon around if you think that's dumb you're gonna find Find this tum though. So let's take a moment to regroup now because I've gone through seven of the paid add-ons that Minecraft released and I've got just one more to go through which is Decorocraft by the way. It's the paid version of a furniture mod and although on the surface I'm not looking forward to it, I do have to say that my opinion of these has very slightly changed as I'm going through the video. I think that the mutant add-on made me roll my eyes the tiniest bit when I first saw it but now I'm terrified every time I see these giant mobs but I see it as a big opportunity. I feel like as I'm adding more of these to my world. It is coming more alive and so it'll be fun after we go through Decor Craft and give my uh, review and first impressions of that. It'd be fun to kind of come back to this and then uh, give every single add-on a try all at the same time because I think that'll be the way to see which add-ons sink and which ones float and really it'll also tell you which ones can add to a world when they're combined together because I do think that the mutants and the additional animals are a really fun pairing. That's what I've started to realize. Whereas dragons hasn't worked so well with any other one. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where Decora Craft comes down. But for now, let's read all about it. So Decora Craft is by Razzleberries and this is one of the bigger marketplace teams. And so this means this could be one of the best add-ons, right? Or you could argue they produce so many that it's gonna be one of the worst. But I think ultimately this is going to have a layer of polish to it. And that is something that is backed up by the tutorials which the game actually has. There is the basic book to describe it all to you. But also when you open up the interface for the first time, it actually walks you through 
through step by step exactly what you need, but this didn't stop me from being very confused about what raw material was. It didn't properly explain anywhere that I could find, and so I decided to Google it. So I searched up DecoCraft, and as it turns out, it's actually uh, a mod for the Java edition from 2014. I thought that it was just a one-off that there was, uh, you know, an add-on from the uh, Java edition. But yeah, this is one with 43 million downloads, and it's 10 years old this May. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to learn how this works. So I need wood, dirt. Dirt is unexpected, but let's throw it in. The raw material is not dirt. Although actually, so raw material is the basic ingredient for all decorations. The deco bench needs raw material. And the decomposer allows you to create raw material by putting coal and either dirt, logs, or cobble. It's a furnace, but for a magic new ingredient. Okay, so for some reason the decomposer specifically needs spruce logs, which is convenient because my house has these two spruce trees from like 2012 hanging out right outside out the front of it. And now we can go in here and we can make a decomposer. No, we need one more. Okay, here we go. I've got my decomposer. I've got this lovely UI, which I can put some coal into. Yeah, fully fully charged. And then I can just ch chug in my my planks, I assume. I'm trying, I'm trying to enter the blocks. Maybe I've got to use dirt instead. Where did my dirt go? Okay, start. Let's do it. Give, turn my ingredients into it. You can do it. Again, I like this tutorial. I, I feel as though, I feel like I made a very silly mistake in there. But now I feel like I'm making another one. What does it need? Why is this not working? Okay, tutorial's over. It's time for me to put in my dirt, which by the way, it does automatically put a whole stack in. That's a cool little animation, have to say. Now let's start it. Ooh, yeah. Process in time, begin. I love loading bars in my games. Um, so yeah, I felt like this was a bit of a weird start to an add-on, but I mean, here I am now with eight raw material, which I can then go take back to my bench and Oh, no, it won't. It's not going in. I thought it was just... Have I... Oh, there we go. You gotta put it in there and then it goes through the colors? I don't understand that. Also, yeah, we're gonna have to put the other colors in there too. So let's grab a whole stack of lapis. I do have this entire shulker box filled with red dye. But now I've got a full red stack in there. So, I mean... Oh, oh. It's like a printer. Will it overflow or... It's, it's perfectly finished. Nice. This is... Look at the white. Okay, this is a perfectly white set of drawers. There is no way you need 16 green for a black closet. I think actually black is all the colors and white is none of the colors. Okay, here we go. I've got myself a fully loaded deco bench, which means I can make myself a table. So again, I actually, it, it does feel like a kind of futuristic add-on for making furniture. I think rather than just crafting furniture and having it, which, you know, would be easier for a lot of people, you get real furniture this way, and it mostly works pretty smoothly. I'm kind of in the table right now, but it at least physically exists. Unlike the modern Minecraft add-on trend where everything has to be an entity and it just feels incorrect, I like this as a way to make real tables that you can stand on. Wow, well, look, I'm standing on a table. That's very, very fun. And the number of choices that you get in here are like arguably quite silly, but for someone who really wants to decorate their Minecraft home, like me, for example, I would love the idea of having an ensuite bathroom in this house. And now I can finally make that dream come true. You know, pro tip, people have big debates about like, oh no, do you pee in the shower? That's gross. That's where you clean. Not knowing half the population does it. So the real, you know, future thinking people, now that we've accepted that you pee in the shower, is peeing in the sink. It's a perfect height receptacle a lot of the time. And so this allows me to have a source of clean drinking water, while also, you know, it's, it's a urinal at the same time. And if you really feel like going crazy, it doesn't have any plumbing, but I could totally do it. Anyway, with that said, I, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do in my sink. What I am going to tell you is the fact that I have lots of choices. Like if we go over to the beds... Okay, I've got a few nice additions to my bedroom. For people who say it's sad that I live in an attic with nothing else, well, for you, I say, oh yeah, look at my lamp here. Oh, it's, it's got light that actually turns on and off, maybe? I've got my alarm clock. Yeah, that's good. And then I've got a pile of iron ingots. Neverite. Wait, no, I've got a pile of neverite ingots, and it only cost me raw material, which is nice. Uh, this does feel like a very old-timey Minecraft mod in a weird way. But also, it's much more charming for that. It does uh, really uh, feel like it sacrifices quite a bit of usability. 
but the reward you get when you're done is there. And it, ultimately, that's what Minecraft itself does when you really think about it. There is no decent tutorial for Minecraft. You just have to play it and work it out. Also, wow, look at that. That's much better than my blue bed. Yeah, here we go. I am now living in the ultimate furniture situation. This is the dream mansion that we all want to have one day when we have millions, but I have it right now. But I cannot sleep in this bed. It is just for decorating reasons. So I'll keep a real bed maybe underneath it. That could be my solution to this. There we go. Yeah, look at this. There we go. I can now sleep under the bed and then it will look like I've still got a bed in here, which is wonderful. If you want to have furniture for furniture's sake, as we've all learned forever people do, this is the add-on for you. On a quality level, I, I, I want to say, you know, my subjective rankings, this is all first impressions. If you played this forever, I'm sure you'd find things you hated and loved and all that noise. Um, but if I had to be, um, if, I, if I had to give you my, my, my impressions so far, it's that this is one of the better furniture add-ons in existence because you have to actually work in a survival world to get the things, whether it be a light switch or a mop or a, I don't even know what this is. Should we, should we find out by using it maybe? Oh, wait, what was that? We could make ourselves. Oh, oh, okay, this is the dream. We've all wanted this at some point in our life, right? Wait, come back. So yeah, it's a little bit rough around the edges, but you know, given that it was mostly made in 2014, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, yeah, we can't actually build any of these computers. And also we wouldn't want to because we've got the computer add-on anyway. All I need is some redstone circuits and I can make a functioning computer versus just one that looks like a a thing that exists in the world. But overall, I'd say you get a lot of furniture for your money. And so I would say that makes it a solid uh, nine out of 10 in terms of quality. There's not a lot of function here, but I like that if you were going to use this in survival, you'd have to work for all of your furniture in a way that would make you feel good about it when you were done. So I would say uh, my quality ranking of this is solidly an eight out of 10. It's well balanced. Uh, the value for money is, <laughs> again, I'm not gonna say, oh, it's those are free versions. So why should you support the creator now? Because I think a lot of, Oh, it's a doorbell. <laughs> Hello, it's me here to tell you that this is in fact a decent proposition for value for money. If you like it, it is worth paying for. If you have the Java edition anyway, probably not. But uh, this is ultimately, uh, you know, the set of add-ons that exist now are here for console players. And so if you really want to play around with the furniture, this is one of the few furniture add-ons that works in a survival world. And so on that level, I would be uh, you know, I, I would be hesitant to give it too low of a score. I think it's a solid 8 out of 10 for its intended market, but I'll give you the full disclaimer, that is not me. Speaking of people who are not me, let's go ahead and let's find out. Uh, oh yeah, look how nice my world looks. Let's find out what happens when you combine all of the add-ons into one world. You can see how the world has slowly gotten more and more hectic, but let's combine everything into one place now and see what it does. So there is a real question as to whether this will actually work. Having 10 add-ons in a world has caused some weird, you know, things around the edges. And I'm going to have literal duplicates of some of these, but still, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Everything besides this extra pack that I downloaded a while ago, all of these add-ons are going into one world. Okay, here's the first question I have. Will Minecraft actually run with every single one of these add-ons enabled? The answer seems like surely it should be no, uh, but on the other hand, if they're all designed with compatibility in mind, there's nothing that should stop all of these working perfectly, and so that is exactly what I shall try. Wow, it actually worked. I mean, again, in theory that should have worked for cross-compatibility reasons, but it's still crazy to use my doorbell on my house which has solar panels, uh, and then walk in using my walking stick and my weird garage door, open up my computer, which is right next to my cake and my kind of janky chairs, by the way, and then, oh no, what's that in the distance? Do I see a mutant zombie? Better throw some TNT at him. Oh, this is... <laughs> <laughs> this does not go anywhere near as far as I thought. I'm gonna throw my TNT at him anyway, and also that looks like a wandering trader for pets. Better blow him up as well. And you know what? All of this explosion action is getting me excited for one last thing, because ultimately, as much as I liked all of the paid add-ons, I do think the one that will give you the most pure, unadulterated joy, unironically, is just explosive, uh, is the explosive TNT add-on. It's free, and you get so much value, in my opinion, from just doing this. It seems like such a, oh god, I, everyone I know is dead. Myself included. Wait, 
Oh, oh, no, actually, maybe if it goes off there. Oh, wow. I think I just saved myself from something bad there. But the, you can have so much fun with the explosives add-on because ultimately that's all of all that these do provide. There isn't an add-on that I would say yet that is actually a sustainable long-term addition to a world. I imagine that in the you know coming add-ons in the weeks and months that follow, someone will make a decent mod add-on pack basically that functions as one. But right now, I would say that you could buy three or four of these and make your world a little better. But we're still very, very premature. We're very early in this. And I would say it's unlikely... Why is my hand missing, by the way? Oh, fake barrier. <laughs> I wonder what that is. <laughs> it's like a real barrier, but it's fake. Um, I would say that we're very, very early days in this one. And that's to be expected. It's the first time it's come to the marketplace. But I wouldn't say come into this expecting you'd get the best thing in the world. Despite spending $41... Oh, God. I, why am I reminding myself of this? Despite spending $41... I wouldn't say that I got anywhere near the same value that Minecraft itself provides, and even the add-ons that are polished are still many degrees below the polish you expect from Minecraft. If anything, it's an important reminder that actually, uh, Minecraft features do take a lot of work to make because these people spent weeks making their add-ons, and in a lot of cases you can tell uh, where the things went wrong. Although I guess you could say in the case of Decoracraft, and also in the case of uh, the naturalist add-on, because these both existed a while ago, they've actually put more than weeks, they put months or years into it, and then had to work on porting it over to Bedrock, and so ultimately, that is the actual biggest takeaway from this video. You don't need any of these add-ons to have a good time, um, uh, but hopefully, you by seeing them all, you realize that, yeah, they have some value to someone, maybe, and if you were on the fence about buying one, hopefully, this functioned as a buyer's guide for you, and if it didn't, then, I don't know, whoopsie, hope you enjoy the video regardless because I'm gonna jump my dragon and sail right out of here. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you- Oh, man. Yeah, there we go. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye.